Hello beauties, welcome back. Every time we create a Sephora sale video, whether it's products we're restocking on, products we wanna try, you guys always ask, Ooh, like, could you do a follow-up review of the things that you end up getting? Do you like it? What are your thoughts? So that's what we're doing today. There's a lot of products to get into. We're going to split this video into two. And today, all the products we'll be talking about is here, including this. Just kidding. This is just melty. We have Laneige. We have Kosis. Hope I'm selling that right. We have Tatcha Pharmacy Topicals. This is, we've literally seen this everywhere and I think you guys have been telling us to review this. As you guys know, I have very, very, very dry skin. My main skin concerns is hyperpigmentation and um, I get a little bit oily, especially when I'm somewhere humid and hot. But all that's just to say, Keep that in mind when I'm reviewing products. I will say most of these products and most of all the products that I have, they're all pretty universal. I think most skin types can use it. Let's just get straight into this video. Yeah. Boop. It's here. And while Rose over there, I just want to remind you guys to sign up to our newsletter Hello, because today we have our free e-magazine that comes out where we share fun recipes, insider skincare tips, as well as just things that Ro and I have been loving in the month. So if you're looking for inspiration, hopefully you'll find it in here. So yes, all good stuff. That's about it. Is there anything else? No? Okay, back to Ro. As you guys may remember, if you watched the Sephora sale video, I really, really, really wanted to try Supergoop's every single face watery lotion. It's SPF 50. And you guys know how much I love my unseen sunscreen and appreciate Supergoop as a brand, their whole mission to get, they, they literally create sunscreen in any and every form possible just to make sure there's some formulation or there's some product that you enjoy and that you like. So when it comes to the specific sunscreen, that is the Super Goop Every Single Face Water Lotion. I actually don't have it with me. There's a reason why I don't have it with me. Fel has it, so I'll have her throw on some B-roll of like the product, how it applies. I will say it blends nicely. It doesn't give you white streaks because it is a chemical sunscreen. While I was very excited about it, I feel like it was too thick and it was too glowy. And coming from me, that's like, but girl, you love glowy skin. You love the dampy, dewy, dumpling, donut skin, which yes, I love that. But I feel like even for me, it was a little too sticky and it was a little too tacky that even though it looked nice on the skin, it didn't really feel the best on the skin. And I think this was what some of the other reviews have said, that it was too greasy for some people and that it wasn't as watery as you'd expected. I think this is watery. When you let it run, it just like, this is watery. I feel like the Super Goop, it's more plush. I really wish I had it, but I actually returned it because I just knew that especially if I'm coming to Asia, I'm gonna be here for a month. I'm not gonna reach for a sunscreen that makes me feel greasier when it's already like super humid and I already feel like just I'm basking in my own oils. But again, I think for sunscreens, it's very personal. So eh, I don't know, give it a try or just stick with the unseen. I actually bought like three unseen sunscreens to stock up on. To be fair, one day I put the Laneige that we'll talk about in a second. I put this on the left side of my face and the super glue on the right side of my face and I put makeup over it. I went to the office and my team, including Fel, they're just like, whoa, the right side of your face is so much dewier than the left side. So if you do like that dewy look, then I would go for the super goop. Moving on to another sunscreen that I really, really wanted to try. It's the Tatcha Silkscreen Mineral Broad Spectrum SPF 50 PA 4 Pluses. So unfortunately, during the Sephora sale, this baby was sold out from the Sephora website, from the Tatcha website, and as soon as I left the States, it was back in stock. And so I don't have that with me, but I really, really want to try it. But I did get there. Clarifying clay mask. First impressions of the clarifying clay mask. It 
did give that like warming sensation that was a little like, I was a little surprised by. I was like, ooh, like this is nice. It's like a, like a mini facial, a little mini spa day at home. And there are granules in here that is, I believe the konjac, which is a Japanese root vegetable. So here is the product, which is spoolie. It is this like muddy sage color. When you work into your skin, there's like little granules in there. And then as you work it in, it turns from this sage color to this like beautiful pink reddish color. Fascinating, science. All in all, I would say this is actually one of the most hydrating clay masks I've used ever. It is a little bit similar to the wind clay mask in that it doesn't dry. I would actually say the wind is probably less drying because it doesn't harden, but I just feel like the wind one is just otherworldly. But I will say this is a very hydrating and nourishing mask for someone even with dry skin. If you have dry skin, you can still use this. I think, again, Fel and I say this all the time, just because a product is meant for a specific skin type, can always take it with a grain of salt, give it a try and see if it works for you or not. Every time I've used this, my skin feels super soft after, it's super smooth. To me, the only real downside to this is the price, which is $70. $70 for a clay mask is pretty steep, but if you wanna treat yourself, if you want a spa-like experience at home, get skin that's as soft as a baby's bum, maybe it's worth looking into. A tea break. All right, the next chunk of products we're gonna talk about, they're all Laneige. Three of these will probably go through together because this is all from their new reformulated water bank line. And then we have their sunscreen and their glowy makeup serum. Let's start with the water bank blue hyaluronic cream moisturizer. There's a gel version that I gave to Fel to try. So if she does a review, She'll talk about it. So as you guys can tell from the packaging and like the name of all of these products, blue hyaluronic acid is the hero ingredient in this line of products. And what it is, is basically hydrolyzed hyaluronic acid. The formulators at Laneige, they realized that when you ferment hyaluronic acid with deep sea algae and put it through a 10 step microfiltration process, it turns the hyaluronic acid super microcyte, which means it absorbs into your skin better. That's why it says it can give you hundred hours of hydration. There's also green tea derived enzymes in here as well as squalane, ceramides, and glycerin. So what do I think about this? Is this worth getting? It reminds me a lot of the Make Prem Safe Me moisturizer and this falls under the same category as like the Puram Barrier Cream. Even though I think the Puram is a bit thicker, the fact that these are all very basic moisturizers and I don't say basic in a derogatory way, I say basic in a way that it's just, it's very simple. There's no frills, no crazy active ingredients in here, which means you can get very fun and exploratory <laughs> with your toners and or serums in terms of active ingredients. It can seem that it will be thicker because it does have this texture. However, it's just, it's beautiful. It like blends very nicely into your skin. It's definitely on the thicker side because it is a cream, but it's just like, even as it's on my hand, it just feels so like, like a warm breeze on a summer day. And I know a lot of people are saying that the previous formulation is far more superior and that this one is more drying, it's not as juicy, it isn't as lightweight, and that the fragrance lingers. Because I didn't try that, I can't speak on behalf of that. So if you guys have tried the previous before this got reformulated and you do love it, please let us know in the comment section what you think about it. And I will say that one of the first things I did realize about this whole line is that there, it is quite fragranced. And then, you know, I don't really mind it because it's like a very subtle floral sweet scent. But if you are sensitive to fragrance, if you can't handle fragrance, such as something worth letting you guys know. All in all, for a moisturizer, like this to be $40. It is on the more expensive side, but I do really enjoy using this. Like having all these different products to try out, I do find myself reaching for this a lot. And it's something that, yeah, like I genuinely enjoy using. It has a very nice sensorial experience. It applies very nicely. I'm a fan. Next, we have their Waterbank Blue Hyaluronic Revitalizing Toners. I will say I was pretty pleasantly surprised with this. Actually, I'm not because I have 
high regards of all of Laneige's skincare, <laughs> especially their cream skin. So I like was surprised, but also not surprised that like this is a pretty good formulation. So of course in here they have the blue hyaluronic acid. There's also beta glucan, which hydrates the skin, boosts skin barrier, as well as like gently, subtly smooths the skin. And there's also panthenol. So very skin barrier friendly, skin barrier building. This product reminds me a lot of the isn't tree hyaluronic plus toner with five different molecular weighted hyaluronic acids it kind of blobs out it's a bit denser if you see like the way that it drops it is very watery but it also has like a slight viscosity and like a slight denseness to it that i love in toners i guess it's also very similar to the haru haru black rice toner there's also a bunch of hyaluronic acid in there similar to the moisturizer it is slightly fragrance, it smells about the same. It is also a very basic toner. Again, basic, not in a bad way, basic in a very good way in that it just hydrates your skin. And I think especially for teen skincare or if you're in your early 20s, this is actually an amazing toner. I actually didn't use toners until maybe my early to mid 20s. So if you're just getting started out on your skincare routine or if you want an entry toner to introduce into your routine, I think this is actually amazing. So for $30, I feel like this is this is a lot of products and a little goes a long way. You can use three drops, you can use five drops, but like I've been using this for a few weeks now and it's still, it doesn't look like much, but I've been using it. The last thing from the line is their Water Bank Blue Hyaluronic Serum. So in here, of course, there's the blue hyaluronic acid. There's also tripeptides, which help boost the hyaluronic acids synthesis or like the way it works in your skin to let it absorb better. And there's also green tea enzyme, which we have in the Water Bank Cream. Um, well, first off, the packaging, I think it's fascinating. It reminds me of Drunk Elephant, but like a bit harder to gauge because, I mean, there is a dot that tells you where it is, but as you guys saw, I was like trying to look for the opening. Okay, anyway, this has a very, ooh, very interesting texture. It is quite gel-like. I would say like a bit thicker compared to what you normally think of a hyaluronic acid serum. Anything in this texture to me just like, just gives you, that much more of a like a plumping, hydrating, nourishing feel, which ultimately like ends up helping your skin be like a bit more plump. But because it does have this gel-like consistency, some reviews have said that it's a bit too tacky for their skin. I can kind of see that, but because again, my skin is like super dry and it just like literally drinks up any product you put on my skin, this, this is not bad. It does give you that intense dose of hydration that you would expect from a hyaluronic acid serum. Overall, for this being at $45, if you want like a simple skincare routine that's just focused on hydration, I honestly think any one of these products would be great. It just really comes down to what you need for your skin type. This, because it does have the tripeptides, I feel like it will be a bit more like skin barrier building and like a bit better for collagen. It really comes down to what you need in your skincare routine. Moving on to the next two products. This is the Laneige Hydro UV Defense Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF. Plus, the key ingredients in here, there's a bunch of chemical filters. There's also Centella Asiatica, which is very soothing. And there's also Hydro Ionized Mineral Water, which is very intensely hydrating. I feel like this is definitely more of like a lighter weight cream consistency. It's definitely not watery. It's definitely not runny. A couple of massages and it just works beautifully into your skin. There's no white cast. It looks amazing. I will say this is probably one of the best sunscreens I've tried as of late in terms of all the new sunscreens that have been coming out. So the consensus for Rowena is that I actually love the finish. It's not as dewy as I would prefer. It's still something that I can see myself wearing and using and reaching for every day if I have it with me. Moving on to Laneige's Glowy Makeup Serum. So this is something that 
I actually got for one of their events a bit ago and as I was packing for my trip I was like what products do I want to try this is just this is a product I wanted to try so I brought it along and I'm just going to include it in here so this is the Laneige's take on a skincare makeup hybrid I think we'll start seeing a lot more of these and in here there's diamond mineral powder I still remember in our earlier videos diamond powder it's just such an interesting name so the diamond mineral powder basically works to give you that like subtly translucent glow and it helps to soothe out your skin's appearance they also have a light fit prep technology i'm not really sure what that means but apparently it's supposed to kind of stick onto your skin so that it helps the product apply better afterwards there's also a ceramide hydration gel which as we know ceramides are great for our skin barrier it's great for hydration it's a very cute pink packaging there's like little beads inside and earlier as I was applying on, I was catching glimpses of the diamond dust and I straight up thought to myself, I was like, did I just, did I dip my hands accidentally in glitter? It works very nicely into the skin. You know how some primers or some, you know, makeup prepping products, it really does like blur your pores. I will say like my pores, they look, you know, like it's still there, but it doesn't look like it's super, Filled. It's not like entirely pore blurring So I think if you're really looking for a pore blurring product or a primer to ensure Your makeup is locked in and it doesn't move and it's not going anywhere I would still probably recommend like a regular primer because that's what they're known for. It's what they're made for However, if you want something in between that, you know, a serum that can help give you a little bit of that then I think this is something worth looking into. Moving on to the Kosas Tinted Face Oil. I have it in number three tone. Because this is a face oil, they do have a lot of oils in here from avocado to metafoam to red raspberry to jojoba to camellia seed to rose hip oil. I really, really enjoy this. It is very watery and a drop goes a long way. I usually put about three drops and then I'll just dab like one, two, three and then just kind of like slowly work everything in. So as you guys can see, it has a very beautiful velvety finish. It feels really nice. It does have a lighter coverage, but I don't mind that because for as much as I have a love-hate relationship with my freckles, I still want them to show because I feel like it's still my skin and then it's okay if you have imperfections because it like, it's what makes you you. This just looks like a bit more even compared to this. It just, yeah, I think it really like takes out the more oranginess or like, you know, any color that you may not want as much. I am a big fan. This is all I've been using the past two weeks whenever I would put on some sort of face makeup. Some, um, Reviews on the other side of the peanut gallery though. Some people feel like this is very drying for someone with very dry skin I actually feel like it can be mitigated if again you just do your full skincare before using this and or use some sort of serum like this Before applying this so that your skin is very hydrated and plump Another review said that it feels like you're rubbing vegetable oil on your skin I, I can kind of see that like the first time I applied it when it was just like a glob um, I applied way too much. Again, a little goes a very long way. So I think, you know, it's it's personal preference. I don't really mind that. Um, and I feel like it just, it as you guys saw when I was kind of dabbing it on the back of my hands, it does work into your skin very easily. Ding, 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 ding. This was like a, a surprise find, a very, very surprise find. Next we have the Topicals Faded Brightening and Clearing Serum. I'm just gonna say, I think Topical does a fantastic job at branding because this is just, this is so fun. Whoever designed this, many pats on the back. In here, they have Kojic Acid, Trinosemic Acid, you guys know I love Trinosemic Acid, Melatonin, niacinamide, licorice root, and azelaic acid. So all of these are very brightening ingredients. It's suitable for all skin types and skin tones. And it is said that it will help brighten your skin and like reduce all the hyperpigmentation within two weeks. I will be honest because I'm like slowly working this into my routine using it once a week and then working it up to more times a week. I haven't seen that big of an improvement 
But again, it's because I'm not using it every single day with new products, especially with, you know, some more active ingredients like this. I do try to slowly introduce it to my skincare routine to make sure it doesn't aggravate my skin. That said, I feel like I do like the way it applies. It's a very interesting consistency for like a serum to be in this bottle. It's in this beige color that just blends very nicely into your skin. It gives a very nice glow. It has a very nice finish. It is quite nourishing because it is slightly on like the thicker side for a serum. It pills for some people and then it does give like a slight white cast. You know how sometimes when you put on a serum and then you work a moisturizer in and it takes a while for the moisturizer to work in because I think it's just like not combining well together. So that is something that could happen. My personal review for this is a TBD. I am very excited about it and I wanna keep using it. And for the price between 18 to $38, I think it's really worth it. It's like a good bang for your buck for a serum. As you guys know, like this serum is 45 and serums can go up to like hundreds of dollars. So I think this is a very fun product that I'll definitely use more. The only thing that I would wanna call out, actually there's like one and a half things. Let's start with a half. The half is that it could potentially cause breakouts. You know, your skin might be purging. It's not something that I personally experienced. And the, the main one thing is the smell. Some describe it as, chicken, run egg, nair hair removal. I think when I first used this, I wouldn't really say I noticed the smell too much. I was like, oh, interesting, but it also wasn't, like it didn't linger, it didn't stay for too long, so I just kind of got over it. But as our team was doing research and I read over it and I smelt it again last night, it's there. Like it does have that scent, however, rest assured like it's not something that's going to stay on your skin for the last product let's talk about pharmacy's 10 percent night mask what is it it is a smoothing leave-on night mask with 10 percent niacinamide that's clinically tested to visibly improve skin texture refine pores and support the skin's moisture barrier so it does look like a gel-like consistency when you just put it on your skin it's actually more like a cream. Even though it's clear and you guys are gonna be like, bro, it's like a gel, it's thick. Like she's thick, like she feels like a thick cream. And you guys can probably see like just applying that little glob onto the back of my hands. Like look at how glowy and dewy that is. So in here, there's of course the 10% niacinamide. There's also 3% panthenol and beta glucan, which hydrates and supports skin barrier. And there's also upcycled blueberry seed oil that's high in antioxidants and can help revive and restore duller looking skin. I was really surprised by this. I did really enjoy it. So while this is meant for people with all skin types, normal, dry, oily combo, anyone with congested pores that you want to tackle, that you want to take care of, it might be too sticky and tacky for people with oily skin. I actually would love to hear Fel's thoughts on this or any of your guys' thoughts who have more like oily combo skin. If this works for you, let me know down below because yeah, I was actually really surprised by this. So that was part one of z haul these are all the products that i use if i want to do like a quick rapid fire what i would recommend and what i may sit out on of course i return the super goop i really enjoyed the laneige cream skin i really enjoy the toner i really enjoy the serum but again it's like really comes down to what you're looking for in your skincare routine or what you may need really love the tatcha clay mask it's just really expensive really love the laneige spf this is turning into my go-to face foundation, face makeup. I'll probably skip the dewy serum. I would get the topicals. I think it's a great price point too. And I would get the pharmacy 10%. So I would basically get like half of these things here. Great Rowena, thank you. That was not helpful at all. But yeah, I think like at the end of the day, it just comes down to what you're missing in your current routine. If you are missing something in your routine, definitely check these products out. But if you already have a solid routine and you're just itching to buy new things, I think you're good. I think sometimes we forget that like basic is good and that, you know, a very simple skincare routine that's maybe like 
three to five steps can do just as much as a 10 step skincare routine. So a couple of product shout outs that I wanna highlight that we're gonna talk about. It's gonna be a combination of Sephora picks and also just like new launches in general. Of course, there's like the Like Butter from Topicals. There's the Pharmacy 10% Waterless Vitamin C Serum. The That I Met You. Renewing Rich Beauty Cream that I was eyeing for the longest time. Soas use Concentrated Ginseng. I'm holding these two side by side for a reason. We have Glow Recipe Strawberry Smooth BHA Serum as well as their sunscreen. And Super Egg has a new Bio Mist and a serum. So very excited. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And um, yeah, let us know down below if you want Fel to do her video on her Sephora picks. Bye!